Good morning. It's my great pleasure to introduce our guest minister this morning, the Reverend Ron Ferblau. Thank you, and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge. Are there announcements this morning? Anyone have anything on their mind and heart that they need to share with the congregation? Going once, going twice, <laughs> sold. <laughs> Let us take this time then to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship and center ourselves while we listen to this morning's prelude. <laughs> Please join me in the call to worship. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs for the courts of the Lord. My flesh sings for joy to the living God. Happy are those who live in the house of the Lord. Ever sing your praise, O God. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, who gathers the church into one body, gather us once again in your presence and strengthen the bonds of affection that hold your people together. Bless us with grace to cooperate with one another in love and service that we may be the signs of your uniting love to our fractured world. Teach us to show compassion for those in need, to face challenges with imagination, and to counter disappointments with prayerful trust. So may your church bring forth your will and your reign. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join in the opening hymn, number 32, I Sing the Mighty Power of God.
Dear friends, longing for rescue from the weight of our failures, let us confess our sin to God who hears our pleas and waits in mercy to forgive. Gracious God, we confess that we have not been your servant people. We are not as loving, caring, and sharing as we should be. We are weak in the cause of justice, slow to opportunities for kindness, quick to anger and words that hurt. We put ourselves in the center of our world. We turn away from our neighbor's need. We do not thank you nor pray as we should. Accept the burden of our sinful selves, heal our pain, and set us free. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. My friends, there is no chasm that cannot be bridged, no loss that cannot be recovered, no mistake that cannot be forgiven, no life that cannot be redeemed by the grace of God in Christ Jesus. Put your confidence in the mercies of God and know that you are forgiven. Glory be to the Holy One who can and does make all things new. be seated. Good morning. How are you? Yeah? It says it's time for a children's chat. Welcome all the young people to come forward. Young in age and young at heart. Absolutely, we could do 50 minutes in there. Is that where Pastor Marie sits when she talks to you? <laughs> ah, okay. Would you like to talk to her? Please, let me not steal your thunder. Well, this morning, in our gospel lesson, Jesus is going to talk about two men who came into church to pray. And one talked about how wonderful he was, and he did everything so well. And he wasn't a bad, as bad as that guy standing in the back. You know, the people who sit in the last row. Sorry, folks. <laughs> but you see, the man who was so proud of himself and thought he was doing everything just right forgot that he was a human being. And we human beings make mistakes. I'm sure if you guys are brothers and sisters to each other, okay, you know what mistakes each other make, right? 
And you're very quick to remind each other about those mistakes, right? But Jesus was saying, this man didn't acknowledge that. He didn't say, you know, thank you for allowing me to live this way, but I also know I make mistakes. And forgive those mistakes. Because it happens. We go through life and there are times we just trip up. We use language we shouldn't use. We stick our tongue out at people. We smack them when we shouldn't be smacking them, right? We hit our brothers and sisters if they don't give us what we want when we want it. Okay? But that, that man who sat in the last seat, he wasn't perfect. Far from it. But he said to God, I know I'm not perfect. I know I make mistakes. Help me. There's a lady named Anne Lamont who says, if there's any prayer we learn during our life, the first one should be to say to God, help me, help me, help me. We don't have to be fancy. We don't have to remember specific words. But those two, if we can remember them to say to God, help me, help me to get through the day. Help me not be fresh to my mother and dad. Help me not to be nasty to my sister or brother. Okay? And then when we make it through the day and things go halfway good, at the end of the day, when we get in bed, we turn around to God and say, thank you. Thank you for all you gave me, for allowing me to be here, for being God. Because God wants to hear things. That's the most important thing. And they don't have to be fancy words. As long as we talk to God, that's what God would like to hear. Okay? Shall we pray? Gracious God, in our lives, Help us to remember we aren't perfect. Teach us the simple prayer, help me, help me. And when we receive what we need, we thank you for all that you give us and the love that you pour out on us. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us your spirit, O God, that we might hear your word, so that your wisdom will draw us closer to you. Through Christ, the living word, we pray. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from Jeremiah, chapter 14, verses 7 through 10, and chapter 19, verse 22. Although our iniquities testify against us, Act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our rebellions indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning this people, truly they have loved to wander, they have not restrained their feet, therefore the Lord, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace but find no good for a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. 
Can any idols of the nations bring rain, or can the heavens give showers? Is it not you, O Lord our God? We set our hope on you, for it is you who do all this. The Gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all of my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends our reading of the lesson. Good morning. There are times when we come across passages that are in our lectionary. We kind of listen to them and we say, ouch, where is the good news in these lessons? And certainly the prophet Jeremiah isn't giving us one of the most optimistic passages of the scriptures. But he's reminding us of who we are and what we can become when we don't pay attention to what is in the scriptures. Reminding us that God asks of us that we love God above all and we love our neighbors as ourselves. And just like in life, when we don't do that, there are consequences. The gospel lesson that Jesus taught, the parable that he gave to those who were gathered to hear him, is a lesson about prayer. And it is the second lesson in prayer in this chapter that we find in Luke. In the previous week's lesson, the, chap the verses that are just before this section is the story about the widow and the unjust judge. And it's about the value of being persistent in our prayer, being persistent in our faith, keep on keeping on, as we often say, that even though things may not go our way, even though there are times in our life where we're walking through the valley of the shadow and we're not and experiencing mountaintop moments, to keep on, to be persistent, because God does hear prayer. And that example of the woman and the unjust judge was Jesus' way of reminding those he was teaching to keep on praying. At some point, God hears prayer and God will move people to act justly. And in this week's lesson, 
the lesson in prayer is about humility. Remembering, as I told the children, that we are not perfect creatures. All of us, in some way or other, have foibles, faults, eccentricities, call them what you will. We all have something in our character, in our actions, in the way we go through life that others might not like, that we may object to. Whether you want to call them sins, whether you want to call them foibles, mistakes, all of that is who we are as human beings. As long as we are in this life, we will never be perfect. Try as we might, and some of us try. Some of us don't even attempt it. But it's a reminder to us that as we go through our day, my dad, who died quite young, always was after me to be patient, saying, Ron, you be the humble one. Take the back seat. Because at the right time, if you're supposed to be pushed ahead, it will happen. But don't put yourself ahead. And in our illustration, the man who Jesus calls a Pharisee is someone who is puffed up in himself. Moving an example into the 21st century, we might not talk about a Pharisee, but in this season we might call the silly season of elections, might we remind those running for office that they are not perfect? I don't care which political party you talk about, the claims that we hear the rhetoric that comes across to us, what we see in campaign ads, is nothing more than us puffing ourselves up to try and make us look better than that poor tax collector sitting in the back. Okay? Whether it's a Republican talking about a Democrat in the back or a Democrat talking about the Republican sitting in the back. One is no different than the other in this, what I call, silly season. If it wasn't so serious this year, it could be considered silly. But it's a reminder to us also. When we look at it, it's easy for us to point the finger at that poor guy sitting in the back seat. Sorry, choir, I'm not talking about you. Or am I talking about the folks in the back here necessarily? But when we turn around and we want to point fingers at others to remember who we are, to keep ourselves humble, to be able to say, you know, maybe there are times I could be that Pharisee. I could be that person who thinks I'm better than someone else. It's a temptation in ministry sometimes to think that we can do no wrong. That's why we serve congregations that remind us regularly that we are not perfect. We have those moments when we try, but then we're brought back down to earth. And Jesus example here about that tax collector who was in the time of the scriptures the tax collectors were considered collaborators with the Roman Empire they were corrupt they collected the tax for Rome but they added as much as they could to that tax to line their own pockets 
And because they collaborated with Rome and not the Jewish people, they were not awfully welcomed. They were definitely not loved by the people. So there was a reason for that man to understand, I am a sinner. I am not perfect. But God, have mercy on me. Have mercy. As I said to the kids, as Anne Lamott teaches us to pray, help me, help me, because I can't do it on my own. Help me, God. Because then, if we remember, I believe it's during, and that is the whole point of grace. When we acknowledge our imperfections, when we acknowledge that I'm not good, I'm not perfect, I've done things wrong, but God, help me. Jesus says, that's the person who leaves, who has been justified, who has found cause with God who has found and will receive God's grace because he recognizes he needs it. It is when we recognize our need, it is when we recognize who we are that God can work with us. God can come within our lives and begin to shape us and to transform us into God's servants. But when we think we're perfect, and when we think we're better than you, and you, and you, and you, oh, thank you, God, I'm not like them. God can't work us. God can't do anything with us because we haven't acknowledged, we haven't remembered who we really, really are. And that's what God looks for. God has abundant grace to give us. God has a tremendous amount of love to pour out on those that wish to follow God. But it can't happen if we don't acknowledge that we need God in our lives. May God help us May God remember us, and may God teach us to be humble as we walk through our days and through our lives together. Amen. Would you stand and join me as you are able in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's remain standing and sing together hymn number 450, Be Thou My Vision.
Please be seated. Before we enter into prayer together, are there specific concerns on your heart? Are there celebrations or joys that you wish to share that you would like to raise up at this moment for the congregation to remember together? Yes, ma'am. Prayers for Joanne. Good. Are there any other prayer requests, joys to share, things to remember? Then let us pray for the church, for the world, and everyone in need, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, this morning, we pray for the church in every place, that wherever people gather in your name, you enable us to listen to each other with open hearts. Give your people unity, O oh God. Replace our pride with reconciliation. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for musicians and artists for Sunday school teachers and their students, for ushers and greeters, church council members, secretaries, cooks and cleaners, student leaders, deacons and presbyters, pastors and bishops, and for all who serve your people. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Muslims and Jews, Hindus and Buddhists, and people of indigenous faith everywhere that their paths may lead with ours to greater understanding of the goodness of faith in its many languages and forms. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for this amazing earth, for rich soil, for abundant sunshine, and all the foods that you have made for our health and enjoyment. We thank you for clean air and water. Teach us to be grateful for your gifts so that we, we protect the creation that you have given us. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Reassure us, O oh God, that you desire good for your world and all people in it, and that your provisions are sufficient. Infuse us with a commitment to share with others, especially with those who do not have such riches and who today are hungry. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our nation, for our state, our county, and our town, for our president and Congress, for the leaders who struggle with drought and famine, destructive storms and lack of food or shelter, for leaders of peace movements and for those who do not know how to create just societies, for all who are suffering from the horrors of war, especially for children who do not know the reason for their pain and have no power to change their situations. We pray for soldiers as well as for dictators for diplomats and for those who pray each day 
for the welfare of others. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering from all forms of injustice, brokenness, or illness, especially all who have asked for the prayers of this congregation and for those whose well-being we hold in our hearts. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those concerns that we have named aloud, and now we name those that remain silent and private within the depths of our heart. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of eternity, we know that all days are redeemed and held in your grace. We remember with gratitude and honor all those whose lives have enriched ours, and especially those whose faith has given shape to our own. Keep alive within us the hope of the resurrection. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With humility for all that God has given us, let us gratefully give for the work of the church and the healing of this world. The ushers may now come forward to collect our offering.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. Holy and merciful God, you know the joy that is in us when we offer ourselves, our time, and our possessions for the work you set before us. Use our gifts to heal and teach, comfort and challenge, that all the world might give you praise. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 687, Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. My friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, the God who made us, the God who loves us, the God who travels with us all our days, be and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.